Welcome to Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide, your periodic peek into the wonders of wellness and the vagaries of self-help. Join me, professional skeptic and self-help abuser Paul Flower, and him, chartered psychologist and author Dr. Gary Wood, to dig under the covers of popular psychology. This podcast aims to bring you happiness, whatever your objections. Well-being, what does it all mean? And I know we start generally asking the good doctor a question, um, and here we are again. What is it? What is well-being? There's lots. If we, if we look now, we can see there's lots and lots about well-being, and it's a huge industry. And one thing that intrigues me is that despite it being, I think, as we you referenced a couple back, $42 trillion, these people still don't know how to spell it. So someone... <laughs> Someone will put a hyphen in the middle and some people can't be bothered. And I'm one of the can't be bothered. I think it's been a word long enough for it to lose its hyphen. But has it lost its meaning? Does it have any meaning to the the man in the street or the woman? I I think if if you think about, I mean, I'm always interested in companies and you think about they've got some kind of well-being plan. And it usually involves Xander and Sue's in tie-dye coming into the office once every month to do some mindfulness and yoga. And I'm thinking, ah, wouldn't it be better to just pay people more and give them breaks and better con- <laughs> better conditions? But no, tick it off on the checklist. So it's almost become a HR exercise then in, in some respects. Yeah. And and even in government, you know, we're we're now talking about well-being indexes and following well-being as if it's something we can kind of grade. Like you are a star in well-being or A plus, or oh, your well-being's dropped to C minus today. You know, it it feels a little it it feels a little bit like, you know, it's it's something new that you have to be kind of graded on. And you know, most of us are well past that. Although you do like a good test. As oh, we, uh, we, we proved yeah. last week. Well, I think if we think about happy, the difference between well-being and happiness, happiness we can think of as a smaller component of overall well-being. And with happiness, what we're trying to do is balance positive and negative emotions. And with well-being, we're trying to be a bit more holistic. So it's health, happiness, and usually health, happiness, and prosperity. Yeah, I've seen life, life satisfaction. Is your life worthwhile? Happiness, happiness versus anxiety. You know, where do you come out? Yeah, and also includes a sense of meaning in life, as we've covered before, and how well we cope with stress. Because there are parallels between how we manage well-being and how, how we cope with stress. And, and it's perhaps useful to think of well-being as a balancing act. That is how well our personal resources meet our life challenges in the physical aspects of life, social and psychological. And stress then is an imbalance of the pressures versus resources. Okay. So as you've mentioned the... Office of National Statistics, it's useful to think of some of their factors when we think of a an holistic view of well-being. So they look at things such as relationships, health, work status, where you live, that's your local environment and community, personal finances, the state of the economy, governance and how well we trust government and environmental factors. So each each of these factors gets a different weighting depending on who we are. And then if that wasn't enough, uh, on top of this, there are intersecting factors such as age, ethnicity, gender and sexuality. And each of these colour the picture of well-being in a slightly different way. So it's it's probably even more complicated than happiness. It's way more complicated than happiness. I think Pete, if you ask somebody in the street, how are you today? Are you happy? You know, they'd have a general answer to that. But if you ask somebody, how's your well-being? They wouldn't know what the hell you were talking about. So yeah, if you stop somebody in the street and you can say to them, are you well? And they instinctively know what you mean. But what happens as a process has to go on in the background. It's, do I give that person a headline? Do I give them a stock reply, edited highlights, or do they get the full documentary of woe? <laughs> is, is it a promo? Is it a comedy? Is it a tragedy? So essentially, when we ask somebody, are they well, it's an invitation for them to tell a version of their life story. So some people, you'll give a fine and an okay, 
and other people you'll tell them everything i think it's, it's interesting that it is kind of creeping into hr and into you know what companies are best to work for and what you know what are their ratings on how they treat their workers and all the rest of it because when i was looking at what works well-being which is not a snappy phrase at all but it's a, it is a website with a quite a lot of information <laughs> on it and it kind of it rates that we're most miserable between the ages of 23 and 68 which is pretty broad to be fair and the problem is work you know, work is the thing that is most likely to make us miserable, either the lack of it, the intensity of it, the fact that we don't get paid enough, the fact that it takes over our life, we don't have a proper work-life balance. Um, and it's interesting also that the Green Party have um, a kind of proposal that, you know, we create a well-being economy rather than a, a profit and loss economy. And in a well-being economy, this, these are their words, the policies are formed in terms of human and ecological well-being, not economic growth, which you know, sounds very worthy and worthwhile, to be fair. There's something to be said for not just basing the, the well-being of an economy on was it gross domestic product. What it means is that a few people are doing quite well and a lot of people could well be miserable. So when I was writing uh, the well-being book, uh, I stumbled on the writing of, well, didn't stumble, I knew of her, uh, a writer called Karen Armstrong. And she she's written many books on the history of religion. And this time she wrote a book called uh, 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life. And so when I was doing the final edit, I was thinking, oh, that's the missing piece. And a really key question she asks is, does it really count as well-being if it comes at the expense of another? Yeah, you mentioned this a couple of episodes back, I think, yeah. you know, whether, whether, you know, our pursuit of happiness or our pursuit of well-being is tempered if, you know, we have to put somebody else down in order to get to get to our own state of well-being or get richer because somebody else is poorer. Yeah, and there's also something called equity theory when you're at work. So if you're not paid enough, you will find other ways to balance out that equation. You, we've all got this inherent sense of fairness. So if the employer is really stingy and you know they're taking the proverbial, you will find other ways to reclaim in some way. Or, or to feel like that you've reclaimed. Yeah, just, you know, nicking the paper clips or yeah. uh, <laughs> sitting here looking at my paperclip mountain uh, from 1989. <laughs> but what we will do, we'll try to find ways to balance that equation. But if we don't need to, and we are, I think the Green Party's idea is that if we think about human potential, don't see some people as being natural wastage or collateral damage. Yeah, now this is going to be difficult, isn't it? Because I think particularly in this country, in the UK, because obviously you can listen to this podcast everywhere, but in the UK, we have a tendency to want to blame the other or dislike the other, whoever the other might be, whether it's European nationals or immigrants coming and taking our jobs or, you know, the, the employer who isn't paying enough and therefore has to get people to work for, for less. We do seem to need to want somebody else to blame, whereas if we had a more well-being focused economy and were focused on everybody being at a level and everybody being happy, then potentially that you know benefits all of us. Well, it's all based, isn't it, on a zero sum game. So if you believe there are limited resources and your benefit has to come at somebody else's loss and vice versa your loss is somebody else's benefit then we will always be fighting for resources so it's interesting that often for some people there are unlimited resources and for people with the least they have to follow this zero-sum game of that you know and so if somebody over there is getting a benefit that must mean i'm losing a benefit i, I wrote a lot about on this on, on confidence because if you think about it psychologically we often think about putting other people down to boost our own confidence. But we could equally boost somebody else up and that would build our confidence. And that way we've got two people who are confident. Yeah, you know, that would be fabulous. And that, that should be the way that we should all be aiming to be. But unfortunately, there's some characteristic or character trait, um, certainly in our society, I think, that that puts us in the other way and we do have an episode plan uh, un unbelievable i know but we do have an episode planned for future which is talking about you know being selfish or selfless you know can we be happy um if it's if do it's we? at the expense of another we do yes uh, you haven't looked at the you notes, just decided but, uh, that on yourself didn't you <laughs> i think that's a whole episode in itself we, we to be perfectly <laughs> honest 
So it's useful to recap is that if I ask you the question, are you happy and are you well? What are the answers to the, both of those questions? The, the way I would think about the question, are you well, is you're asking me about my health and my health is generally good. Okay. So if you ask me, oh, are you well, I'm not necessarily thinking about, you know, my entire system. I wouldn't necessarily be thinking about well-being. I would just be thinking about, you know, do I have a cold? Am I, am I, you know, am, am I feeling fit today? And, you know, generally speaking, yes, today I am well. If you're asking me, am I happy? I'll be, yeah, you know, I'm all right. But then, you know, that's, that comes, uh, there's a local thing, I think, with that in terms of, you know, us, us being Midlanders or West Midlanders, you know, we are slightly dour and therefore, you know, we're not going to be the most effusive when anybody asks us that question. I think what we've you, what you've hit on there is that how we ask the questions in everyday life and how we answer them. Although we've got this process going on in the background that's quite complicated, we often answer in really uh, immediate ways. So you know, you've equated well w- with just health. I, I mean, if I was to say, "Are you healthy?" Uh, it's probably not a question people ask. It's just. The vagueness of it allows us to interpret. So what is going on in the background is what psychologists are trying to get to. What process are we going? So if your doctor says, are you well? Yes, you would say that. If you go and see a psychologist and says, are you well? It might change the context. Yeah, I see that. And I think the other thing potentially is that, you know, if I'm going to take anything away from this particular episode, it is we perhaps need to think about well-being more than just trying to decipher what well-being actually means. We need to think about well-being as the Green Party are, as a, as a policy, as things that can be improved in everybody's life. Everybody's well-being could be better. I think, if anything, that the, the whole pandemic, it was a an example for us to because it's a pandemic it affects the whole world and you've got lots of people uh, especially in this country and in the countries that have you know are, are, are further through the process saying oh it's ended well yes it's ended for you but because it's a pandemic it affects everybody so it hasn't ended until it's ended for everyone and i think there's something of a metaphor we can have for well-being how can we make sure everybody is well how can those values of fairness be applied to everyone the same standards why is there a, a sliding scale of fairness in in the um, the realm of positive psychology i was looking at something this week on digital well-being and the idea is that how being online so much affects us and they used a, a positive psychology model to assess digital well-being, which I thought was quite innovative. And it's called the PERMA model by Martin Seligman. And that's P-R-E-R-M-A. <laughs> well, P-R-M-A. PERMA. Or, it's the PERMA method, eh? Pr- PERMA. I mean, it sounds more like a contraceptive method, doesn't it? But no, it's PERMA. Let's stick with the hair. It's PERMA. Permafrost. P-E-R-M-A. So P stands for positive emotions. So balancing positive emotions of life for life satisfaction. So that's going back to the, you know, are we happy? The idea of the good life and the pleasant life. Then there's engagement, a sense of being in the zone. And I think we spoke earlier on about the idea of being in flow when we set goals for ourselves or we do activities where we lose sense of ourselves and we lose sense of, our, of time. Then there's R is for relationships, social relationships, connecting with others. M is for meaning or purpose in life. And A is for accomplishment and mastery. I'm always a bit worried about those because it always sounds like it's Western productivity. The idea that we have to, that a meaningful life has to be a productive life. No, but I see what you mean. I think that's a, a good way of, of putting it. And it's a good acronym that I think people could easily refer to and come back to when they're thinking about their own well-being and their own state of mind. So um, thank you for that. Uh, as a final question, I would like to ask you the difference between well-being and wellness and uh, if you actually understand what wellness is. I, I, as far as I'm aware, wellness and well-being are just uh, synonyms. 
that, that they mean the same thing. And the reason I set you up with that question was that uh, Marina Hyde in The Guardian the other week wrote that wellness is part of a class of words unified by the fact that only the most dreadful bores on earth know what they mean. So <laughs> oh, congratulations. Th- thank you very much for that. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> the irony of privilege. Anyway, wellness just came into being because people didn't want to keep saying well-being, well-being, well-being. So we just alternate. So going back to the PERMA thing, and it's used for any aspect of your life, actually, to to look at the PERMA model and say, OK, is this task or this activity, is it balancing? How is it affecting my emotions? Is it causing me to be engaged? Is it building social relationships? Is it creating meaning or purpose in life? Is there some kind of accomplishment or mastery? So you can apply that to, you know, the time you spend on social media or the time you spend online and if it's not ticking all of those boxes then you can maybe find something that is brilliant that's a really good idea actually i like that uh, i like that uh, filter we're using perma as a filter so that's now a perma filter uh, i'm getting uh, oh, consider very good. that in future if you'd like to join the conversation um we are on twitter and you'll find us at skeptics guide you can also find us online skeptics.guide and on facebook too happiness for skeptics and i'm still not an administrator (laughs) (laughs) thanks again for joining us that was and is happiness a skeptics guide with paul flower and me gary wood Remember to hit the subscribe button wherever you find your podcasts so you'll be the first to know about new episodes. And do join the conversation on social media where we post supporting links. And do tell your friends, a podcast shared is a community of happy skeptics increased. You didn't think that one through, did you? (laughs) 